Hi, I'm Sanma Benawan. I'm back with the pseudocode for task one, task two, task three of the voting system for the paper 2.1 IGCSE pre-release material. So you know the drill. Here's the pre-release material. Let's get started with the pseudocode. Now in the last video, on the left we can see the Python code. We wrote the beginning of task one in 14 lines. And here is the exact pseudocode translation, you know, from Python to pseudocode of those 14 lines. So we have print, enter the tutor group's name. We figured out the length. It should be, it's a validation check of the length check. So the length of the tutor group should only be two or three characters. Then print how many students are in the group. Validate that while the number of students is less than 28 or greater than 35. Error, there should only be this number of students per class input the new number of students and while print how many candidates are running in this tutor group input the number of candidates while the number of candidates is less than one or it's greater than four error the number of candidates should be one two three or four and again input the new number of candidates and while names equals the empty array with empty strings times the number of candidates so if they had two candidates you're going to allocate space for two students to run and we're going to also have a votes array the votes arrays of type integer and it holds the number of votes for each candidate we have a variable called abstain which we are you know initializing to zero and we have a for loop for the form tutor to be able to enter all the names of the candidates that are running here's the next you know set of lines of codes where things start to change all right, looking at pseudocode lines, the ones in green, so line 26 and 27, these are what help task 3 to ensure that if there is a tie, we will repeat the process all over again. Now line 28, 29, 31 to 42, those are part of task 2. Those lines are to ensure that we have a unique student ID for every student who's going to vote. So starting with line 28, we're going to create a flag called unique. It's a Boolean variable set to true. Then we have line 29. We've created our array voter ID used. It's equal to the M, like zero, initialized to zero, multiplied by the number of students in the class. On line 30, we have a for loop that's going to run from one to all the students. Line 31, please enter your unique voter number. We've prompted for an input in line 32, input the voter ID. Line 33, by default, the unique is equal to true. So, so this voter ID is true. Now we're going to check in line 34, we have a for loop that's going to check from one to all the number of students. If the voter ID that was entered is equal to one of the voter IDs that's already been used, then we're going to set unique to false and if next i. So line 34 to 38 are checking element by element in the array voter ID used to make sure that the voter ID that was entered is not one of those elements. In line 39, we have selection. If unique is equal to false, then print, sorry, this voter ID has already been used. You cannot vote again. Line 41, else. And now we're going to start the whole voting process of task one. So else line 42, we're going to store that voter ID in our voter ID array. So it can't be used again. Line 43, print here are the names of the running candidates in your class. Line 44, four count runs from one to the number of candidates. Line 45, print, you know, this type, this counter number. So either one, two, three, four to vote for one of the candidates. 46, next counter. And line 47, print to abstain from voting, press zero. Now in line 48, we're going to take the vote input. Line 49, while the vote input is less than zero or vote input is greater than num candidates, do. Line 50, print error that is invalid. Please vote by choosing a valid number. They have to choose either the zero, one, two, three, or four. And line 51, take the new input, line 52, and while. By the end of the while loop, we have validated that they have input a valid number, either zero or one or two or three or four. Now, in line uh, 53, we have a case statement 
to be able to tally. So if they typed zero, if that voter typed zero, abstain is going to increase by one. If they typed one, the votes for the first candidate will increase by one. If they type two, the votes for the second candidate will increase by one. If they type three, the votes for the third candidate will increase by one. And if they typed four, the votes for the fourth candidate will increase by one. And next count means that these lines of code from 31 till 58 are going to repeat for all the students that we have. Okay, so this is the voting process that's from task one and it includes the task two part which is making sure that's a unique ID. Finally we have finished the voting process and we're on line 59. We're going to print the name of the tutor group from line 60 to 63. We're going to print the number of votes that each candidate got and how many abstained. In pseudocode line 64 we're going to first set the most number of votes to the first candidate. Then we have a for loop from one to the number of candidates. If one of the candidates has more votes, then most number of votes is equal to that more votes. And if next count in line 69, then line 70, we have count winners. So we want to see how many of those candidates had the most number of votes. So in line 71, for a count is from one to number of candidates, if the votes count, so the votes that that candidate got is equal to the most number of votes, then he's a winner. So winner becomes names candidate of count and print the winner is winner. Count winners is equal to count winners plus one. We need to know how many people won just in case there's a tie. Line 76 and if line 77 next count. Now, if you are asked to write task one or task two, you can just also add line, you know, 78 tie equals false, line 79 end while. This will work for line for task one or task two fine. And if you took off the green, you know, lines 26 and 27 from the previous slide, and if you took off as well as taking off 78 and 79, will also work to be able to answer task one or task two, whichever comes on the IGCSE exam. Supposing that task three came on the exam, so you'd have to write all the previous lines, you know, from one to 77, and here's the new line 78. We're gonna initialize an array percentages. It's a real data structure, so all the elements are of type real. It's equal to 0.0, .0 and it has four elements in it. Line 79, number of students voted is equal to the number of students in the class minus the number of students that abstained from voting. Line 80 for count is from one to number of candidates. The percentages of the percentage that that particular candidate got is equal to the number of votes that they got divided by the number of students who voted and all of that is multiplied by 100 print the name of the candidate along with the percentage of votes that they got and line 83 next count line 84 print the number of abstained votes is abstained line 85 print the number of votes casted is num students voted and print 86 line 86 if count numbers is equal to equal to one print thank you voting is complete Line 88, tie equals false. Okay, so we don't have a tie. Line 89, else. Line 90, tie equals true. Line 91, print, there's a tie. We will repeat the voting. Line 92, set abstained again back to zero because you're about to repeat the entire process. Line 93, you know, names new candidates is equal to the empty string multiplied by four. So we're now setting the candidates names to the empty string line 94 and if line 95 run a for loop to the new number of candidates and line 96 if votes of count is equal equal to the most number of votes then append those names to our names new candidates okay so we're going to check the first student if the first candidate had the most number of votes we're going to append their name to this array names new candidates we'll continue next count then in line 100 we're gonna set the old array names candidates to be equal to the new array names new candidates and because there's a while loop it will check you know while tie equals to true the entire process meaning all the lines from you know all the pseudocode lines from line 26 onwards until 100 are going to repeat again until tie becomes false until we've finished having any ties in our program here's some sample output so we had four candidates adam bilal carl david and to abstain press zero so at the end you know adam had five bilal had five carl had five david had five number of stain is nine so this candidate is a winner adam is a winner bilal is a winner carl's owner and david is a winner here's the percentage of votes that they got finally 
The votes were repeated, and Adam is the winner. He got 16 votes, 0 for Bilal, 0 for Carl, 0 for David. Thank you so much for watching. There's a link if you want to download the PDF. It's for sale on Mimbi.com. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.